I'm sure you have a, a lot of stuff going on, um, so I'm happy to dig, uh, dive right into it whenever you are. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm assuming you're recording on your end as well. I'm about to hit the record button on my end. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay. So the one of I, I was doing a little bit of research. I, I saw your website um, in Closed World and uh, doing a little bit of research into your uh, your background. And I guess the question I wanted to start out with is. Uh, what life, because you were talking about how you grew up on South, what is it, South Whidbey Island, Washington? Whidbey, W-H-I-D-B-E-Y. Whidbey, South Whidbey Island, Washington. Mm -hmm. Can you can you talk to me about growing up there and kind of what your educational experience was like and um, if you grew up uh, religious in any way or just what your family was oh, like? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so South would be, even though it's really close to Seattle and it's surrounded by a, a, a whole bunch of population, it's still a fairly rural island. It's it's long and narrow. So there's a, there's a Navy base on the north end, but it's 50 miles away. So okay. the south end is, you know, a single-A school. And when I was growing up here, it took a lot to get into trouble. You know, you had to, you had to find your own trouble, basically. Um, but I, I, I was born and raised here and was part of a, um, a strong born again, born again, Christian community that was down here and okay. that my family was along those same lines as well. And it was, it was nice. It, it's, it's a great place to grow up. Honestly, if you can, if you can pull it off, it's a great place to raise kids. And I was lucky to be part of this community down here. And then after that, I went, to again very very sheltered so after that i went to a state college right after high school and just drank my way through my first year because you know when you're that sheltered it's like holy smokes there's a world outside of here yeah and then transferred over to western washington university and spent the next three years there so that's that's kind of go ahead sorry i was gonna say if, i was gonna ask if you remembered your your parents passing anything down to you and teaching you anything that you began to question after going to university? No, nothing, nothing. As a matter of fact, I was, I was probably, you know how some high schools, they have like most naive or most gullible awards. It, it, and we had that actually for, there were several classes above me that had that. And had we had that award in my class, it would have been me. I, I didn't even think people lied literally until I went to college and my family, you know, I, I never really questioned anything. I didn't question authority. I didn't question uh, family members or I literally did not think that higher powers lied until honestly, I saw JFK, the movie, you know, by Oliver Stone in the early nineties in the theater. And that's what got me on that road up until that point. I could ignorance is bliss, and I was the living example of that. Okay, so you would say, so and this was during your time at university when you saw the Oliver Stone film. Uh, it was right after. So okay. even even in the, up into the late '80s, because I graduated, I graduated early in '85, and was up at Western in the the late '80s, and Oliver Stone's movie was in the early '90s. So I was already doing i was working uh, at my uncle's construction company and having a great time doing that but that's when i saw it so i was in seattle literally in seattle when i saw that so would you and would you say that before this time you didn't really have any kind of propensity toward unpopular beliefs no or none Did, beliefs? didn't even know they existed I mean, other than the, the ones you grew up hearing, you know, it's like, well, everyone's heard uh, like the myths and monsters stories, you know, Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, UFOs, everybody's heard that stuff. You know, even when you're kids, you, you hear that stuff, but you don't tie them to anything sinister, like a, some sort of organized cover up. Right. And when, and after you saw the Oliver Stone film that led you to think differently yeah that there's more out there that that, right. that you shouldn't that, that you shouldn't just take everything that people higher than you in terms of any sort of authority that they tell you is is just at face value that it that is as advertised and the more i looked into it you know even the little things that, that in fact they're one of my favorite quotes is that things are rarely what they first appear to be 
you know, stuff like, uh, oh, I don't know, Thomas Jefferson, you know, one of our greatest presidents. Uh, he was a slave owner. Or John Wayne smoked a lot of dope <laughs> in Hollywood. Or some something silly, like the fact that, you know, that Knight Rider uh, was supposed to be a, a Saturday morning children's show. And it ended up being most, one of the most popular primetime shows of an entire decade. So little little silly things like that, you know, you, you start to realize that we everybody spins it. It's not just history is written, written by the winners or uh, the Napoleon quote, which uh, history is just lies that are agreed upon. Everybody spins it in a certain way. Look at, look at Facebook for a, per, a perfect example of that. Everything that you see on Facebook is the shiny, best, most optimum side that people put forward of themselves. Their, their lives could be collapsing around them. We don't see that. We, we see it's like, oh, wow, these guys have a pretty good life going. Most right. often it is not the case. Right. And that, yeah, and especially, I, I see what you're saying about this. Um, It seems like you were very driven by this uh, desire to start to think critically. Yes. Yeah. Once once I got into it, because it was interesting, it was it was intriguing to me to where when I first realized that if it because you know how it goes if one group is going to lie about something then a lot of other groups are going to lie about something and then I started learning about protecting your own interests and and you know it's not just politicians or corporations it's anybody in in positions of power it's too tempting that is you don't want you know if you have a way of spinning things in a direction that protects yourself people are going to do that and then 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 i started looking for it and then and as i got older i realized that that everybody does it and the bigger the secret the more they'll the the, the more they'll do to protect it and so yeah conspiracies for me was was a natural because it, it was it was interesting and i loved aesthetic knowledge it was just a different aspect of aesthetic knowledge that you have to look for you it's it's rarely just going to be advertised in books because why would you do you feel then that by um by pursuing uh these unpopular theories and beliefs that you are in fact protecting yourself or do you find that you're exposing yourself even more to the elements well <laughs> It expo I mean, there's something to be said for ignorance is bliss. Uh, it, 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 obviously, it, you, you know, you're a happier person <laughs> if, if you don't know all the, the horrible things that are going around you. But at the same time, truth does add, I believe, adds depth to your life and, and adds a, a clarity and, and answers a lot of questions, especially if you're a curious mind type, if, you, if you're into ad asking questions. You know, everybody asks them as children, but a lot of people just take the glossed over version at face value. You know, why is the sky blue? What does the core of the earth look like? And you know, it, stuff like that. We, we take whatever, whatever our parents or the school system or the um, or, or people in positions of authority, we, we take that as gospel. And even even if it bugs us, even it, even a little part of our brain goes, I don't like that answer. But you know what? He's not going to lie to me or he or she or whoever it is. And so, yeah, it exposes you in a, in a certain way. But I, I think it enriches your life as well. Right. And that I mean, that really is what your um, I suppose you espousing flat, flat earth is for you. That's a pursuit of of truth, right? Oh, yeah, because it, it answered so many questions that I had that I couldn't resolve on my own, that that other even other conspiracies couldn't resolve uh, uh, on their own, which is once you get in, it's the ultimate open-minded test, which is if you can get your head around the whole concept, then it opens up everything else. That, that's underneath it all the other conspiracies it makes you revisit everything you've ever ever looked at everything in mainstream science and every part of hidden science do you could you tell me when you started to question the veracity of a round earth sure it was the middle of 2014 and it was because your follow-up question is going to be why why would you ever look at that it, out of sheer boredom, conspiracy boredom is really what got me into it because I had looked, by that time I had spent, well, you know, from the early 90s up until 2014, that's quite a bit of time. I looked at just about everything, every conspiracy you can think of. Uh, I looked at it and, and digested it and graded it and, eh, you know, try to categorize it. 
and then because everybody in the conspiracy world knows about this that, that's the best part of the, of the whole flat earth thing ever whether you actually whether you're in conspiracies or not everybody's heard of it and everybody hates it it's a terrible conspiracy it's awful it's like it's ridiculous right but you don't know why it's ridiculous you just immediately jump to why would anyone even look at that and i just did it's like you know what why not what's it gonna hurt right i'm just gonna stare at this thing and 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 look and started going through a couple youtube videos and and honestly thought that i could resolve it completely in my head in under a weekend and then that didn't happen i i actually started working on it you know slowly at first kind of bits and pieces like well okay i can't i can't answer that question let me move on to a different aspect and maybe a week later i'd, I'd pick up another question and this kept going on for nine months to where at the beginning of 2015 i had flipped i had a moment literally uh, the 10th of february woke up in the middle of the night and got up and said okay I got I to gotta solve this one way or the other. So I took all the knowledge that I had to the, at that point and made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues and never had put out a, a thing on, on, you know, on YouTube of any consequence and just made a video, one video that, that morning and said uh, it was called um, Flat Earth Clues, like introduction or your guide to Flat Earth and <clears throat> put it out there and basically asked the question to everybody that was in, in out there in the internet hive mind, which was, I don't think it's a globe anymore. I can't prove it. Somebody can, I'm sure, go ahead, try me, but you know, pr prove me wrong. And that was a both, both a blessing and a curse because once that happened, of course, I started getting people, not only were, were people, you know, asking me more about the theory, they were really curious <clears throat> about it, but they were also, uh, there were people who wanted to interview me and the subject matter experts started coming out on my side and I never did get anybody, even to this day, two years plus later, nobody has called me up and said, you're absolutely wrong or, or even emailed me. Here's why. And that alone, I mean, honestly, after the first three or so months, I was convinced. I mean, I was a little nervous beforehand when I put them out because it's like you always think it's like, OK, I think I got something, but you're never quite sure. You, you know, I wasn't 100 percent. How can anybody be 100 percent with this? But now I, I have no doubt it's uh, it's it's an amazing thing. So anyway. Can you can you tell me can you describe to me the diagram that you adhere to like um I was I was watching one of your flat earth clues videos videos oh. and it said that Antarctica is the shoreline of the great earth pond can you just kind of describe to me with some Yeah thoughts? yeah there's it, it for people that are listening and you want to uh, get a better idea of what's going on it's the visual representation is the UN flag if you want you want the short version of it take a you know just type in the un flag into google and tell me what you see there you see the earth not as a globe but as a dinner plate where the center of that plate is the north pole and the outer edge of that plate would be antarctica everything else looks pretty much the same the continents more or less have the same shape with the exception of antarctica because mainstream science says that antarctica is a continent a continent that's shaped like an island much like australia but in the flat earth world it's shaped it just covers covers the outer ridge it, it surrounds us entirely it's a much much larger and much much deeper the official map projection that, that is used for the un flag is called the azimuthal equidistant map which is a z i m-u-t-h-a-l and then equis equidistant and you can you can type this in anywhere and find it and that is the same map uh, it's the map that's used by the usgs it's in their catalog it's it was discovered a thousand years ago which is interesting by a persian scientist named al Biruni, and it's used as the un flag which is also very very interesting it's it's uh it's and it's easy it's easy to understand once you see it but a lot of people when they're looking at it you know it it starts you out on your journey of questions you once you see the map it's like okay you follow that up usually with about 200 questions and you're saying okay uh, how does this work how does this work how does this work and it's like okay and, well. and how about the movement of the sun and the moon sun and the moon are literally tiny little dots of light that are right on top of this thing moving over, around it like a mobile over a child's crib 
and they're very, very small and very, very close. And that right. goes along with the whole human perspective thing. We're told that the sun is 93 million miles away and that the moon is 237,000 miles away. And yet they look like they're exactly the same size. And we know this recently because the eclipse, the moon fits perfectly in front of the sun. And from a flat point of view, it's the exact opposite. And that is that both objects are less than 50 miles wide. One generates, they're both their own independent light sources. One generates a lot of light. The other one is just a night light. And we can't tell any difference because with human perspective, we have a horrible, horrible time uh, genetically determining size and distance of generic objects. So, for example, and you're saying, well, what does that mean? Well, like if you take a pen on your desk and you hold it up right close, and we've all done this as kids, right? You hold up a pen really close to your eye and you're going, okay, is that pen really, really gigantically huge or is it just really close to my eye? And you're going, well, we know it's a pen, so therefore, you know, it's got to be just close to your eye. That's fine. But if you take an, any other object, like a generic ball-shaped object, and hang it off in the distance somewhere, it, or have somebody do it for you, and they don't tell you how big that ball is or how far away it is, you're going to have a tough time uh, determining that. And there's all sorts of wonderful tests that have been done in universities to that effect. We have a horrible time with judging distance and judging uh, relative motion, whether an object is moving towards you or you moving towards the object. All felt this like when we're on buses that are next to each other or trains. Uh, or cars, you know, that funny feeling when you're sitting in stop and go traffic and you let your foot off the gas or the brake and you see the car moving in front of you or to the side of you is, it, you know, is it moving forward or backwards and you don't know what pedal you hit because you're not sure you can't tell the difference. It's, uh, it's fascinating. Okay. And what, what would you, I've, I've noticed also in doing some research that a lot of flat earth different flat earth groups and societies seem to be at odds with one another and I was reading um, a Guardian article and it was talking about Eric Dubay. Is that how you pronounce his name? Uh, yeah, D-U-B-A-Y. Yeah. yeah, and he was talking about how he believes, because I think that he's head of, I th what is it, the International Research Flat Earth Society? <laughs> yes, Interna Fl Inter International Flat Earth Research Society, yes. Research Society, right, and so he was talking about how he believes that there are different flat earth groups that are uh, controlled opposition and how he, and actually your, your name was mentioned in it, which is actually how I discovered you. And he said <laughs> that he believes, he believes that you and others who belong to these different flat earth groups, he referred to you as shills. Right. Now, what can, can you talk to me about this? Oh yeah, you bet. Uh, it is the same sort of phenomena that happens in just about anything, for lack of a better word, intellectual or academic. And that is when two, like, you see this in uh, academia all the time, when two different groups are trying to come to the same conclusion and or trying to get published. And, you know, it's the first because really the first one that gets published wins. And so it's it, the competition gets fierce. And that's all it really is. And of course, I'm not a shill. Nobody is. But Eric, Eric was the first one to say, oh, yeah, there's you can't trust anybody, literally. And, and he was asked this on an interview recently. It's like, OK, who do you endorse? And you know, he subscribes to no channels. He endorses no one. It is it is him and him alone. He's he's like I'm the only guy you can trust, and so I was like, all right, I get it. If he and I, I his videos were made about two months before mine, and I hadn't even watched any of his stuff, nor did I know that he had a, a book out there. So when I put out mine, which really had a different approach to his, and and I can, I, it's easy to differentiate. I kind of created the dummies guide for flat earth up until that point there weren't that many people in the first part of 2015 making this and for me flat earth was just coming in like a fuzzy radio station and all literally all i did was was walk up to the to the radio and, and you know quarter turn to the right and the station started coming in I, I the clues that i made had no math behind them they had uh very little in the way of uh, uh scientific method behind them it was just connecting the dots really Trying to trying to get it down to the lowest common denominator, which I was pretty good at because that's what I was trained to do when I was doing um, software proprietary software training out in Colorado for all those years. So when I looked at this, it's like, okay, I think I can break this down, and I did. I broke it down into small, easy to digest pieces. 
So that was just the difference between he and he and I. Uh, we're still, I, I still feel we're on the same team. He has different views, and I've never said anything bad about the guy. But if he wants to call me a shill, that's fine. Doesn't, no, doesn't but you would you would definitely say that what you're what you believe to be a kind of egotism is counterproductive to uh, the flat Earth movement. It, it it is at the same time though I I'm not going to completely condemn it because that's how anything really gets done in especially in capitalism. You know, the, there's this competition out there. That's what makes people strive harder. Everybody wants to be the you know part you know, they they want to be the 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 ones that get in the in front of the spotlight and well, some people are just willing to do more than others to get that far and with me I, honestly just about everything i've done so far in this community has been unsolicited uh, you know people just called me and and, and it was different for me because honestly i thought that i would be shot down i thought for sure that i i would just get blown out of the water by uh, some some guy with a master's or a PhD in astrophysics or astronomy, but instead it was the opposite. So, um, stemming from that, I want to, so why, if, if it is indeed a flat earth mm -hmm. and, and so you're, I know that I was reading one of the articles and you were talking about the Uber elite, right? And right. so why, what is the incentive then of the Uber elite? So to, okay, like a two tiered question, sure. who exactly is the Uber elite? And mm -hmm. what is the incentive for the Uber elite to um, continue to tell the public that it is in fact a round earth? Gotcha. And that, I get that question probably one out of every 10. What, why, who, why would you do it? Why would you cover it up? And who would be covering it up? Because we didn't build it, obviously. So why, who would you, the Uber elite are the people that represent the first rule of power. The first rule of power hasn't always been, has been stay hidden. That's it. That's the first rule of power. The long version of that is never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown. Again, which makes sense. That's why kings, kings can get overthrown. Presidents can be overthrown. Anyone can, you know, can, the mansions and castles can be burned down. So you never, the, the true power, you can't, they can't get to you if you're not a target. So you can buy presidents, you can control different members of parliament. You just never put yourself in that. So the, the and I don't even call them the, the Uber elite as much as I call them the authority, which is a blanket coverage for uh, certain royals, the Uber rich, and um, uh, members, just hidden, hidden members behind the scenes I had a third one for this, and I keep forgetting what it is. Eh, it doesn't matter. But these are people that, that you, if you want the, the conspiracy term for this group. It's the smoking men that sit in, you know, in dark shadows in those long, long buildings. The people that, that, can, that create a controlled economy, a controlled world. Here's why you would... I'll, I'll give you the, 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 the easy version to understand of this. If you remember the, the 1998 Truman Show, do you remember that one? Yes. Okay, perfect. Here's the difference. Truman gets out there with his sailboat. He gets makes it out to the edge. And of course, you know, because of how the plot was written, he is going to go through that door because he has nothing to lose. He's just some lowly insurance salesman who figured out his wife was fake, his friends are fake, his whole life is fake, right? But let's say it's not Truman that goes out there in the sailboat. Let's say another guy goes out there first. Let's say it's the mayor of that town. You know, guy has limos and mansion and servants and whatever. Just name all your perks, right? Just a mayor. Well, he's got a lot more to lose than Truman does. Does he go through the door? Because Truman was like, well, hey, the devil you know versus the devil you don't know. In this case, the door was definitely more enticing than the world he had before. Even though the producer wanted him to go back and just play the role. So the mayor goes out there. I'm betting he doesn't go through that door. Multiply that by a huge amount because here's the thing. These people, the, the people that run the world, the actual people that run the world have a lot. They have everything to lose. Absolutely everything. So keeping the people from knowing that the world is finite has, has a large, large benefit to them. I'll, I'll give you quick th three quick reasons. Um, one is... Uh, uh, 
economic, one is spiritual, and one is uh, academic. Let's touch on the academic one first. And that is, let's say tomorrow, all of a sudden, some independent UN team announces that, oh yeah, by the way, you're in a flat, enclosed world. You're in a snow globe, a planetarium, an ant farm, a petri dish, whatever you want to call it, right? Well, academia just on its own would be spun into chaos almost overnight. And by that, I mean... Uh, think of think of all your major academic disciplines, you know, uh, like astronomy and astrophysics. They would shut down tomorrow. I mean, literally, never open their doors again. That's every university in the in the world, right? Follow that with every other major physical science. Take your pick: hydrology, archaeology, biology, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Something with an ology next to it. Those physical sciences have to be retooled now, literally from the ground up, for the, with for the new model. I mean, we're talking about an amazing amount of books that have to be rewritten. Science is just in a state of chaos. That's just the academic part of it. Economically, uh, you'd have to close down all the world stock markets for at least a month. I mean, literally, you'd have to shut down everything for a month to just keep people calm. I mean, for God's sakes, you know, a country goes into turmoil. A single country goes into turmoil and depend, you know, some of the world markets drop 10% in some cases. It really, you know, there's there's a huge, and think of this, the, um, think of the major uh, defense contractors, the, the big companies, General Dynamics, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, weapons companies, people that thrive on world conflict, they sell weapons to both sides. Well, if you're a, in a created world, an enclosed world, you're all in the same boat. Every, is, is war still happen? Does, does modern warfare as we know it, does that still exist in the in the same format? I, I doubt that. And then that leads into, of course, the, the biggest of them all, which is the spiritual side, which is science has been beating the church over the head for the last 500 years, you know, 20, 25 generations. And now science would have a lot of questions because it's not just the flat earth that they would have to answer for although that is the is the number one question that starts the chain reaction which is so you've been showing us the globe for the last again 500 years at least and you couldn't even prove it on camera until 60 years ago so what else are you wrong about? You know, let's look into other things. I don't know, like the Big Bang and evolution and carbon dating. I, science would be backpedaling so quickly they may just fall over, and that you know nobody wants that. Maybe what I'm saying is that the powers that be, the uber elite, the authority, they have a vested interest in all three of those sectors. So vested that even if there's a chance, even if there's like a ten percent chance that the general population would grab pitchforks and torches and just start burning down universities. They're not going to let that happen. It was an easy decision to make. In fact, I agree. If I would have been in that room, if I've been sitting in that, that dark, the dark table and that meeting would have ta taken less than 10 minutes because people said, okay, how bad could it get if this thing gets out? And you know, that what I just listed, they'd say, yeah, okay, we're not going to, you know, we'll do whatever it takes. Money is not an object here. And so that's that's what they did. They sealed off the outer rim. They sealed off the upper uh, layer, and then just kept it out of mind for as long as possible, which lasted uh, up until about two years ago. When you say they sealed off the um, outer rim and the upper layer, with mm -hmm. what? What do you mean? Oh, I uh, mean the first thing you would do is one of the things when I was connecting the dots because I was looking at this from their point of view. I love empathy and I love putting myself in other people's shoes because you can kind of get a feel for why you would do what you would do. And when it got to building the world, how would you hide the world from the population that lived in it or continue hiding it? The first thing you would do is you would seal off the outer rim, meaning you would seal off Antarctica. And that's exactly what happened after 1956 during Operation Deep Freeze. Once Admiral Byrd got back from that, the powers that be all of a sudden started drawing up the Antarctic Treaty, which was ratified in 1959 and included every major economic power in the world. To, and it's the only treaty that's ever been unbroken. It's the only treaty that's still going today where basically it says, yeah, you want to fly to Antarctica, you can spend your $10,000 and go to the, one of the peninsulas with the penguins and have pictures taken next to icebergs. But 
That's about it. That's all you can do. If you have a company, I don't care how big they are. If you, you're the president of Exxon Mobil, you want to do some, you want to set up shop down there. You can't do it. Nobody can. Uh, it, at, no corporation is allowed to do work down there for any reason whatsoever. And the, the bigger one for me wasn't just that no, I mean, big enough, I should say a big red flag was, you know, cor no corporations can go down there. But the second is you can't, those corporations can't even talk about it. They can't protest it. And if you want to say, you know, you know, because of most of the people that were down there in the early days of the Americans and the Soviets, yeah, yeah, sure, fine, I might, I might go with you. But what about China? What about people that were rebuilding for World War II, like the United Kingdom? What about I don't know every other country? They're not even allowed to protest it. It is, and it's not up for debate. The treaty isn't even up for review until 2041. They locked it down, and which is what you would do. And they did that because you can't have rogue planes and helicopters and survey teams traipsing around the ice because eventually sooner or later someone's going to bump into something and they just didn't want to deal with it so they said all right you know what doesn't matter how many billions of dollars the the world economy is not going to have in it we're just going to keep this thing locked down and and that was that was what they did and then the upper part which was even easier because nobody goes up there is they militarize space but they did that because eventually the subcontractors to NASA, uh, well, the big military companies, let's put it that way, you, eventually they were going to be able to develop their own space programs. So what they did was they just got the, the jump on them and said, okay, we'll create NASA in 1958 and when the Soviets did their side of it and we will keep everything controlled it's like a controlled substance really that's what we're talking about with space and we're going to fake everything we're going to fake the entire space program from from beginning to end in fact not only because people say well you're saying the moon mission doesn't didn't happen i'm going no, no 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 it's way worse than you think i'm saying nasa was created entirely to keep this secret going and they did a great job for a while and then they just started getting lazy and and their production value suffered to where now we've been ripping NASA videos apart for, for some time. And, and it's obvious that they, they've never done a single thing up there. Uh, it's, they, they can't get up high enough. A any person you ever see that ever says they claim to have been, been to space, it never happened. So when, you, when they, there was a comment that you had made in the Denver, that Denver Post article that I found interesting. And when you were talking about how they're trying to make you feel cosmically insignificant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and not special. It's yeah. It goes along with the whole religion of science, which is it's, it's interesting because it, I, I, when you say the religion of science, it should be what the, those, it should be a contradictory combination there. But that's that's not that's not the case. That's what they're doing because they created their own version of a religion, which is you are just this little tiny rock that's flying through this vast, empty vacuum of space, and you're not special at all. And everything in your life and everything in the universe is absolutely happenstance, accident, and there's no method to it at all. There's no purpose. You you should just feel alone and afraid. That's really all they've been saying, and. Every story that they've run, literally since uh, they could look into the skies, and really, honestly, since the space age, was to reinforce that. They, in fact, it doesn't even matter if you read the stories, as long as you read the headline of whatever they're putting out there. In fact, they did one just um, just recently. They, in fact, this this morning, I think, where they said a Saturn, one of their probes just crashed into Saturn. And that it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. It reinforces the same thing, which is, oh, we're doing something interesting on Saturn because you're on a globe. Hey, there might be a face on Mars because you're on a globe. Uh, we're going to reclassify Pluto globe and on and on and on and on. Because the more you reinforce that reinforces the globe, the more it, it's into your head, which is, yeah, you're on this little rock going through space and there's nothing special about you, which is the opposite of the flat earth. Because, because if it is flat and not just flat, uh, let's just go with m the model I'm, I'm, I'm proposing here. It's enclosed. You know, if you are in a big snow globe, then it was built. But then there was some sort of creator and I'm not going to name God here. I'm not nearly that arrogant, but it means that at the very least, th there's a higher technology, a higher power at work here. And yeah, it may not be the divine hand of God on the side of it, but it's one step closer for sure, which means you are part of a very intimate family. And all of this was made for you, 
for a purpose that still remains a mystery. Okay, and do you do you think these are? I only have like maybe two or three more questions, and I oh. I can let you go. Oh, um, wait, wait, take your time, whatever. Okay, Please. so uh, do you do you find that uh, your belief attracts a great deal of ridicule, and that that pushes you? <laughs> further toward the edges of visibility and the fringes that you no longer want to be on a visible platform? Or do you think that it's um, pushing you further, further um, toward the platforms of visibility? It, in this case, it's pushed me towards it because, again, uh, you, you want my autobiography <laughs> down the road. It'll be called, the book will be called Unsolicited. Because this thing is just, I'm, I, I literally, I'm on some sort of amusement park ride that this thing is just taking me on. Uh, I haven't really see, received that much abuse and grief outside of the YouTube comments because you got to remember the, the internet, one of the, if probably the biggest flaw in my opinion of the entire internet is that people can t launch these verbal assaults against other people and do it anonymously. Uh, you know this it is and I've know I've seen this in, literally since the internet just you know took off in the, in the mid 90s which is when forums we were allowed to create an alias you know is this anonymous persona out there and you can go into forums and just just go after people it is they're going to do that they can do the, the, for just about any topic it doesn't matter if it's flat earth or not but once flat earth came in oh yeah it was this that was ripe <laughs> ripe fruit fertile ground for the trolls I, you know, the trolls reach whole new levels when they're when they're coming out at, at us with this however outside of that outside of the um uh the youtube comments or any forum comments that you can see on where people are obviously using aliases almost no, there is almost no trolling because trolls are notoriously lazy uh, you know very few if any i mean 99 percent of my phone calls are positive because people don't want to spoof phone numbers 99 percent of my emails are positive because people don't want to spoof emails because trolls are lazy and so yeah that that's the encouraging thing for me now yeah if i wanted to uh you know any shred of ego i have it's just because i don't go in and read all the comments because i know what's out there in fact i didn't even turn on the comments i think for like the first six months when I when I put these things out because I knew I, I had spent enough time internet savvy enough that I knew what was going to happen and then I turned them all on simultaneously uh, at, a, at the request of a friend so no no I, I haven't and 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 no nor can here, here's the thing the big reason why it would never discourage me or push me away is because everybody that gets into this whole flat earth thing everybody that starts out on it starts out trying to debunk it the t-shirt you know, it's, it's a great t-shirt, which is I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth. I tried personally, me, I, I did the same thing. I was like, I tried to debunk this thing for nine months and it didn't happen. And everybody else does the same thing. I, honestly, if you yourself, you know, thought that flat earth was a great idea right out of the gate, I think there was something wrong with you because it is not a good idea right out of the gate you have to resolve it it's it and which is also one of the reasons why i it's resonated so well in that people start in the hole that is okay they look down at this thing and say it's awful i'm going to tear it apart and how however long it takes them some people can do it in a few days other people in a few weeks others longer but by the time they get to the other side they that's how we know that this thing has legs and continue to have legs because the people that are in it, the Flat Earth community members all went through a trial by fire. So most of it has been internal. We, you know, it's not like they, they caught a whole bunch of hell from people outside of it. They went through, in the, through their own crucible internally, which is they wrestled with it and wrestled with it. And by the time they came out the other side, they're like, yeah, I'm a Flat Earth believer. And, and they and they preach it because they went through it. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm using religious terms here, but it, but it kind of feels like that. It has some of those earmarks where you go through this big process in your head of resolving the issues and we're not forcing you to do it. All, you know, the thing I put at the end of my videos, which is, you know, do your own research and ask questions. That's all I'm asking. I'm going, don't believe a word I say. Don't, don't believe any of this crap, but there's something to it. If you, you want it, you know, you figure it out for yourself and then let me know when you're done, when you get to the other side. And that's the mo go ahead. 
Okay, and yeah, I was just gonna, I didn't want to lose my train of thought. Um, mm -hmm. I was gonna say two, just to, I mean, probably the last two questions stemming from that would be, uh, do you do you currently hold uh, other more or less unpopular beliefs, such as let's say that 9-11 was an inside job or something like Pizzagate? Um, and what, I, I noticed that one of your videos, there was, a, a, I don't know if you actually took this video, but it was one that was posted of a young girl named Millie. Uh, the six-year-old? Yes. Yes. I am very curious because when you're talking about um, asking people to do the research for themselves and saying, you know, don't take my word for it. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, how do you, how do you broach subjects like this with children? Well, with kids, you know, obviously the parents are going to have the greatest responsibility there, but you can't monitor all of them. I, you know, I've seen, I, I remember her and some of the other kids that got involved because YouTube is just open to everybody. You know, it's it's still considered a, a fairly, fairly innocent world, even though there's some dark places out there. Uh, so with anyone that's younger than whatever age, I don't even know if you could do a minimum age. Let's let's just go with driving age. You know, anyone that's younger than 16, you might want to ask your parents. But although, you know, you, there's a lot of kids that are rebellious and they're going to look at their stuff, you know, themselves, you know. So, sorry, let me answer the first part of your question, which was the first part would be um, the unpopular uh, other topics. Yeah, I, I mean, since I was into conspiracies a lot before this, I was into everything. You, you, you take take your pick but flat earth what it did was it if you if you remember like you know like tears on a bar of alcohol you know top shelf stuff this created a whole new shelf above that and that's where flat earth stands alone right now there's nothing else up there and the only thing that ever could be up there with flat earth would be like if you figure out what's happened you know life after death you know the big question mark there so but everything else is falls underneath it because it's under it's in it's literally in the flat earth world. So as much as I, you know, and people ask me, it's like, you want to talk about 9-11 or JFK or Boston bombing or Sandy Hook or Pearl Harbor, or just, you know, just go on and on and on. Oh yeah, I can talk about all that stuff. But it's second, it's, it's not even, uh, it's not even near the top of my th list of things to do on any given day. It's, I focus literally all the time on the whole flat earth. I, no, I still believe in those things, sure. And I, I also believe that Flat Earth will open up and change the perspective of all those other conspiracies. But for me, it doesn't... It This one, this one I really, really hold to because it's, it's, it's a message of hope. It's different from the other conspiracies in that it doesn't have to have this dark, dark, brooding energy around it. It is, and I've seen this with a lot of people. I may see people burst into tears over over this thing because the, for them, they interpret it as like, oh, wow, you know, I'm not alone. That's one of the big questions, you know, the big statements is you're not alone. And, you, you know, there is a big, big spiritual side to this. You can't say that with any other conspiracy. Sorry, back to the kids thing. Um, when, let's face it, you know, the, the kids have to get into it eventually like anything although up until now and again i'm treading on on uncharted territory because with the, there isn't any other conspiracy i could even recommend to kids you know i'd never want to talk about 9 11 to a 10 year old or jfk to you know someone who hasn't who hasn't gone through grade school or anything like that because they're, it's they're dark and there's no light aspect you know find me a happy folk song that has to do with jfk they, they don't exist and yet we've got 200 plus Flat Earth songs that have been created, you know, original Flat Earth songs where people are just singing great things about it. Uh, find that find that with any conspiracy. So the the kids thing is like, look, it, obviously the parents should be involved at, at whatever certain age, but at the same time, I wouldn't dissuade kids from the Flat Earth because it, you know, there's no there's no part of it that that I think is so controversial that it would damage a kid's mind. In fact, let, let me flip that on to, to the science point. And that is, is it any different than putting a, a globe in a six-year-old's classroom and telling, oh yeah, by, by the way, this is where you live. Even though you could not prove it, you, you couldn't even remotely prove it until almost 1960. And you didn't even share a picture of it until 1972. 
So for us, we're deprogramming what's already been done. We're undoing the damage. Okay. I think that um, I think that I have everything I need. 